My name is Dr. Amit Shah. I'm a consultant medical and uh, hematological oncologist working in East Midlands. Uh, today our talk for MD for Lives is going to be polycystic uh, ovarian syndrome in a 25-year-old woman, our case study. So PCOS is a genetic hormonal metabolic and reproductive disorder that is the most common endocrine disorder in women of reproductive age. It's a leading cause of female infertility. PCOS can also lead to other serious conditions, including severe anxiety and depression, obesity, endometrial cancer, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Here are a few stats showing um, what PCOS is in terms of etymology, incidence. So PCOS affects 1 in 10 women. As many as 5 million, as many as 5 million women in the USA have PCOS. A rate of 4 to 12 percent. These are all stats from PCOS Challenge, or so feel free to look at that website. Um, 10 percent of women of childbearing age are estimated to have PCOS. 50 percent of women with PCOS goes undiagnosed, so there's a problem there. 50 percent of women with PCOS will develop type 2 diabetes or pre diabetes before age 40. 4.3 billion dollars is the estimated annual cost to the American healthcare system to diagnose and treat women with PCOS. And there is a three times increased risk of women with PCOS developing endometrial cancer. So it's something that you need to watch out for and uh, deal with immediately. So this is our case study. A 25 year old woman presented to the clinic complaining of excessive facial hair growth. Lately, she has had to use a razor every few days to get rid of her hair, and she is very concerned about this. Apart from this, she's relatively healthy, though on her last annual checkup, she was found to have hyperlipidemia. She is nulliparous, nulliparous, nulliparity, basically having um, your first child with the partner that you're with, and has unpredictable menstrual cycles, with only five menses per year which has been the case since Manati. On physical exam, it was noted that terminal hair growth just above the upper lip, sideburns, neck, and abdom abdominal midline. And there are some facial acne. She is overweight with a BMI of 29.2. The rest of her physical examination is, was unremarkable. Further tests revealed an elevated serum uh, luteinizing uh, uh, hormone rate. Um, LHFSH, we call it 2.5. And serum testosterone was elevated as well. On the TH, TSH, which is a thyroid stimulating hormone, and serum cortisol rate, uh, they were both normal. The trans abdominal ultrasound revealed, revealed multiple ovarian follicles bilaterally with predilection for the peripheral ovary. So we have to break down what PCOS is. So PCOS, the common signs and symptoms are irregular periods, excessive facial and body hair, severe acne, small cysts in the ovaries, insulin resistance, anxiety and depression is also a, a common sign and symptom because of the hair growth, um, infertility, weight gain and hair loss. These symptoms may vary among ethnicities, but the incidence does not. While PCOS is a diagnosis of exclusion, it should be high on any differential of women of childbearing age that present with hirsute features. See the case that, that we were mentioning before. So when we look at the pathophysiology, so the etiology of PCOS is unknown, but we know the following. It's an endocrine hormonal disturbance that leads to a constellation of symptoms. Gonadotropins, 
as in disturbed GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone pulsality, leads to abnormal uh, leucinizing, leucinizing hormones and follicle, follicle stimulating hormone well, levels. Classically, greater than 2 to 1 ratio of LH FSH. Insulin resistance. Women with PCOS have a greater resistance to insulin, hence increasing the incidence of diabetes mellitus 2. Androgens. Both insulin and LH stimulate androgen reproduction by the ovarian thecus cell. Estrone increases due to peripheral conversion. The sex hormone binding globulin. Women with PCOS have lower SBG levels. And here you can see below a chart showing pathophysiology of PCOS. So you can see the adipose tissues involved, the pituitary glands and the ovary as well. You can see the LH secretion, the FSH secretion. There's the impaired development of follicle. There's the chronic anovulation. The hirsutism and acne alopecia is caused by hyper androgenism. Um, and that also leads to hyperinsulinemia and insulin uh, resistance and obesity, uh, which is involved with extraglandular aromatization. What is the PCOS presentation? PCOS is presented generally by disturbed LH FSH levels, and they cause anovulation and hyperovulation. Insulin resistance causes acanthosis nigricans and diabetes mellitus 2. Increased androgens cause hirsutism, acne, male pattern balding, and dyslip uh, dyslipidemia. Low adip uh, adiponectin levels cause obesity, and increased estrone cause uh, is abnormal menstruation. How is it diagnosed? We use a thing called the Rossidum criteria, where a patient has to exhibit two of the following three. Oligo or anovulation, hyperandrogenism, and PCOS identified sonographically. Depending on the presentation, the following etiologies need to be ruled out. So, in oligo anovulation, you need to rule out prolactin secreting tumor, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, uh, hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, POF which is premature ovarian failure. Also in hyperandrogenism, you need to rule out congenital adrenal hyperplasia, Cushing syndrome, and androgen secreting tumor, and the exogenous androgen. So a workup, you're checking out FSH levels, LH levels, TSH levels, prolactin, pretestosterone, DRS levels, 17-OH progesterone levels, and the lipo profile. You'll do a transvaginal sonography to visualize the ovaries. You can see the right ovary sag here. There's a sag in the right ovary, sagging. And here is a clearer sonographic uh, image. You can see the sag here. How is it managed? Women with mild PCOS symptoms may be managed with observation alone. You could try combined oral contraceptives, which are the cornerstone of medical management for PCOS. It's because they help reduce androgens by suppressing GnRH release. Also, the progestin component of um, combined oral contraceptives reduces endometrial proliferation. The following steps are generally followed in PCOS management. Step one, you induce withdrawal bleeding using either medroxy progesterone acetate the mpa 10 milligrams um, 10 days or by daily for five days or micronized progesterone and this is the dosage step two you introduce oral contraceptives uh, ethanol estradiol uh, drospirinone uh, ethanol estradiol with norgestimate ethanol estradiol with uh, desogestrel an alternative step is cyclic progestins, an MPA um, with a micronized progesterone. How is hirsutism treated, the excessive hair growth? You might try a topical agent like Venica, uh, alpha uh, topical. Uh, you might try spironolactone, 
surgical removal. Acne, acne spots are treated with uh, topical retinoids like tretinoin, adapalene, tazarotene. You might try topical benzoyl peroxide with or without a topical antibiotic like benzoyl peroxide with tendamycin, benzoyl peroxide with erythromycin. Um, you might try an oral retinoid like isotretinoin. Uh, other therapies include luprolide, which is a GnRH agonist, metformin for insulin resistance, and statins for disability, uh, dyslipidemia. What are the complications of PCOS? General medical complications include dyslipidemia, which you get in 70% of cases, cardiovascular disease, endometrial neoplasia, uh, which is three times relative risk of getting that, obstructive sleep apnea, 30 to 40 times relative risk. Obstetrical uh, complications include infertility or subfertility, usually due to anovulation. Early miscarriage, 30 to 50% have early miscarriage. Gestational hypertension, gestational diabetes, preterm birth, and perinatal mortality. So in our case, she was treated with uh, COC, so ethanolastradiol with drosperinone. Um, Ethnorthine topical was given for her hair growth and tretinoin for the acne. The patient's condition ameliorated within six months. Thank you very much. This was the presentation for MD for Lives. Thank you.